This should be a pretty short video. We're just going to go over this new NAND bypass stomp switch. It's designed for 1590BB, or sorry, 1590B and larger. 1590BB I guess would work too. But the idea is, so when you want to design a switching system that only has single pole double throw or single pole single throw momentary, as you would find in a soft touch switch, you're often left to figure out how to get a relay to drive the actual switching mechanism. Another problem too with a lot of these soft touch switches is they're usually lugged. So as you can see right here, um, to make it quote unquote through hole, I took some legs off of my clip resistors and clip diodes to bring it on here. Now we have this set up to work with two styles of switches. Uh, if you have the PBS24B4, which is this kind of carling stomp switch right here, um, then that's this is how that's rigged up. However, you'll also notice that there's some holes right here that are designed around the PBS24112P, uh, which is a momentary switch. It's not totally soft. There's a little bit of a click, but it's softer than your typical stomp switches. So this guy is actually, this PCB is designed to work with either switch, uh, depending on what you can get your hands on. All right, and then of course we have our regular labeling here where we indicate what's what. The VIN is the power coming in from your pedal. The plus nine volts out is the nine volts going back out to your effects PCB. We got ourselves several grounds here to get our sleeves to our jacks ground from our main power and ground going into the PCB. And then we have our pedal out and pedal in, which go to our actual output jacks, and then effects out and effects in, which go into the PCB effects. Pretty straightforward. This is all driven by NAND logic. So we'll go over that here in the schematic. But the idea is, if you're uh, setting this up, we also uh, include the LED here with uh, kind of a standoff guide. If you're using like this Carling style stomp switch, you're gonna be looking at like a 12 millimeter standoff. If you were to use these uh, larger ones right here, you'll be probably using a 20 millimeter standoff uh, to hold up your LED. But anyways, the idea is pretty simple. It's just a bypass, true bypass switching system. But if you give it juice, when you click on it, That'll make the resistor turn, or not the resistor, the uh, relay click over. Obviously, that'll also drive the LED. And then when you click again, it goes off. And as you can kind of notice as I do this really slowly, when I'm stomped down, the effect is activated. And then when I release up, nothing happens. When I stomp down again, the effect is disengaged. And then when I release up, nothing happens. Now, it is possible that with switches that get dirty uh, internally, it starts to get a little bit more janky when you get to push button noise. Uh, that's where this capacitor here uh, can come into play. Increasing the capacitance on it will help with noise rejection, basically. But anyways, I'm rambling. Let's take a look at that schematic. Before we get into the schematic, let's go over NAND gates, because that's going to be crucial to understanding what this is actually doing. So here we have what's called a truth table. You're going to typically see these when dealing with logic gates with computers, but in this case also logic gates with circuits. So in this case we have a quad NAND gate, meaning we have four of these. Uh, each of these gates though act independently, unless obviously tied together, and this is kind of how you can look at how it works. The gate has two inputs, in this case we're labeling them A and B, and has one output, which is Y. Now a NAND gate basically will say if A and B are low, Output's high. Or if A or B is low, it is also high. However, if both A and B are high, output is low. Or a very simple way to put it is if any of these are low, output is high. But if neither of them are low, then the output is low. So here we have the schematic for our NAND bypass. Again, true bypass via this uh, relay right here. We have our NAND gates controlling this MOSFET, which in turn controls this relay. A couple things to note though, we are using mechanical stomp switches, and because of that, we will likely need some sort of debouncing method. That being that when you step on the switch, 
uh, the mechanism of the contacts are in micro time, bouncing on, off, on, off, on, off, on, off, on, off. I mean, it's doing this all in a matter of microseconds or milliseconds, but it's there. And we don't want this relay doing the same bouncing because of this. So what we do is we have an RC filter right here, R1 and C1, to act as a debounce. So using a time constant, uh, you can calculate the amount of time it will delay any action, I should say, to the bouncing of the switch. You can get that by multiplying the ohms times the farads. So if we have a 100,000 ohm resistor here and a 33 microfarad capacitor, that will calculate out to a time constant of 0.033 seconds or 33 milliseconds. So if this bouncing up and down of the contacts happens within a period of 33 milliseconds, uh, this circuit right here is not going to know about it. Hooray! I'm useful! Which is good. But if you get like a really bad switch, uh, or one that's really dirty, uh, you may need to increase the capacitance here so that you can increase the time constant to something longer than 33 milliseconds. But there you go. Okay. So now let's understand how the voltages are controlling things here on this PCB. When we first give this guy power, pins 1 and 2 here are driven to high. That's how they're initially supplied for voltage, which then forces pin 3 to low per the NAND truth table. This in turn holds 5 and 6 to low, which forces pin 4 to go to high. And so we kind of got yourself a little bit of a loop right here. And that's also per the NAND table. Now, because of this, the stomp switches are, we're, not, we're saying nothing's happened yet, so they're open. And so you have zero volts on this side, and you have nine volts on this side, and you have zero volts on this side, and zero volts on this side, ultimately making this zero volts as well. So when we stomp on the switch, pins one and two are now directly connected to this capacitor. And so now it'll start filling things up and our voltages on this side will start going a couple of millivolts up because this is no longer at nine volts and it's just a couple of millivolts. The NAND table is going to throw this side to close to nine volts, which is going to turn pins five and six also to nine volts, which is going to turn pin four back to a couple of millivolts above. However, right here, because this is now running at close to nine volts, so it's pins five and six, we have the potential here of nine volts going into the capacitor. And because this is now positive voltage, that tells the MOSFET, hey, go do something. And there you are, your pedal has now been switched. Finally, once you've released the stomp switch, and now this is basically a broken connection, now we have hardly any voltage right here, but we have a nine volt voltage coming across right here, still holding up the effect. When we stomp on the switch again, that's going to bridge the connection. That 9 volts now comes over here into the pins 1 and 2, which sets pin 3 down to low, which then sets four or 5 and 6 to low, which sends pin 4 back up to high. And now the effect, because this area right here is set to low, will be disengaged because the MOSFET is going to release the relay. And so there you have it. Probably explaining it here on the schematic may not be the easiest way to demonstrate it, so I urge you guys to actually download a copy of the build doc where I actually show graphically the voltages as uh, you step on the switch and let go of the switch. So that's it for this video. If you like these kind of videos, press that like button, and if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. If you'd like to support us, please visit our website, which is www.diyguitarpedals.com.au and check out our PCBs and kits. You'll now see that the NAND bypass is up there, and I'll put a link to that in the description below. Anyways, thanks for watching. Cheers.